Welcome everybody to IoT in Action, the show that gives real world internet of things, examples and use cases. I'm Philip Tracy, writer at RCR Wireless News and Industrial IoT 5G. And today I'm joined by Bob Baxley, Chief Engineer at Bastille. Bastille is an enterprise IoT security company. Bob, thanks for sending some time out to speak with me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And uh, to get things started, if you could just give kind of a brief summary, what is Bastille? Sure. So, you know, our tagline is we're a security company for the Internet of Things. And what that really means is we're, we provide network security visibility for wireless IoT devices, uh, mostly for enterprise customers, big financials, people who are really security conscious about kind of the latest, greatest uh, vulnerabilities. Great. And uh, of course, we're going we're gonna to focus on enterprise IoT, but Bastille made a pretty big splash uh, in the tech scene by exposing some, some vulnerabilities and some, some very popular uh, consumer electronics. Uh, could you give just briefly a, a timeline of, of what that was all about? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, so if, if, I, if I take a little more than briefly, there, there's kind of a interesting arc that led to, to those vulnerabilities being discovered. Um, so if we go all the way back to like the 90s, when we had network, network security, network uh, cybersecurity just being started, um, the problem there were there, there was all of these wireless or wired protocols on wired networks and enterprises. And uh, in the early 90s, there was no mechanism to see that traffic um, until someone came up with a uh, promiscuous mode driver for like uh, network cards. And all of a sudden, once you were able to see the traffic on all these protocols, you could see that they were very vulnerable. You could inject traffic and fuzz them and break the protocols. You could see you know, passwords and plain text, those sorts of things. Um, so if you fast forward to the late 2000s, this technology called Software Defined Radio came out. And what Software Defined Radio lets you do is the same thing that we could do with promiscuous mode NICs for wireless. So all of a sudden, we had this piece of hardware that lets us see all these wireless protocols. Um, so with, with Mousejack and Keysniff for the two vulnerabilities really released, um, what had happened is just kind of a natural evolution of that, of that trend where we took software defined radios, uh, we looked at those protocols that talk between the mouse and the, and the computer, and found vulnerabilities. It turned out the encryption was poorly implemented. So um, Mousejack lets you inject keystrokes through that connection. And key sniffer lets you passively listen for keystrokes coming from someone else's keyboard. Um, so it's pretty pretty neat to see, you know, kind of a repeat of the wired cybersecurity problems happening for wireless IoT. <laughs> and um, enterprise IoT is on an even bigger scale. Uh, you all have an excellent white paper on enterprise IoT security. Um, I definitely encourage everyone to download it and read it. Um, it, it is a fascinating read and also um, somewhat terrifying. Uh, if, could you tell us a little about the state of digital security? Um, what has IoT done uh, to make things better or worse, um, less secure, more secure? And um, what are some, some associations or, or consequences uh, associated with um, IoT and IoT breach? Sure. Um, well, you know, we're really seeing uh, a lot more IoT because we're getting more and more obsessed with sensing and automating all these tasks. So what that means is you need all these IOT devices to be distributed. And if there are these distributed small devices like sensors and servos and those sorts of things, um, or Linux boxes on walls in the case of like a nest, uh, it's going to end up being wireless. Right. And it's, uh, there's, there's already wireless protocols like cellular and Wi-Fi. and cellular is great for long distance, but it's expensive. Wi-Fi is great for short distance, but it's power hungry and you know, a short distance. Um, so we're starting to see all these IoT protocols serve all these different wireless devices. And so that's where the, the threat is really coming from is, is device manufacturers are having to make protocols to support these new wireless use cases. Um, and they're doing that quickly. So, you know, oftentimes security is the last thing considered. You ship the product and then you worry about security when people start disclosing vulnerabilities. So we're seeing that in the IoT space. Um, as far as like breaches go, the, the vulnerabilities are basically infiltration and exfiltration. 
So like the mouse jack, for instance, this wireless protocol that has been around a while, but we've only just now started having the tools to infiltrate it, lets people from 300 feet away inject keystrokes and take over your computer. Similarly, things like Zigbee or LoRa or even cellular connections let people exfiltrate data out of your environment. Um, and really even like, um, like audio bugs that we see in spy movies, <laughs> those are also the sorts of wireless IoT things that we see that, that corporations are worried about. And, and on that note, um, I guess before we get into what Bastille is doing specifically about this, um, I'm curious how you feel about um, how these issues are being addressed uh, by these corporations. Um, when talking about the landscape of IoT discussions that are going on, uh, are industry leaders kind of, are they taking the right measures? Um, are they aware of these security problems? And, and uh, I guess, are, are they building faster than the technologies that are enabling these uh, new vulnerabilities? Um, yeah, so a little bit of yes, a little bit of no. Um, I think people are aware that wireless can be vulnerable. So in the early 2000s, we saw uh, a host of Wi-Fi security companies that, that did really well, and most of them are now rolled up into Cisco and Aruba and those sorts of places. So there's an awareness that the wireless can be threatening. What we're trying to make people aware of is there's all these vulnerabilities in protocols other than Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is just 2.4 and 5.8, and there's everything from you know DC, which is basically zero megahertz, up to six gigahertz. There's all these wireless communication protocols. Um, and that's where these new vulnerabilities are coming with IoT. Um, so that's where we're trying to, that's where we find that we have to kind of educate the customers a bit in the security people a bit. But honestly, when we, when we do talk about the problem, it's, the light bulb goes off. I mean, it's a fairly straightforward concept. There's these devices that you have no idea, no visibility about, and the only way to secure them is to first know that they're there. Great, and now on to Bastille. Um, you all are very focused on IoT, enterprise IoT specifically. Um, so what are you doing to keep the path of enter enterprise IoT clear of these security breaches? And what needs to be done on the ground level on the, the end user or, or enterprise, um, the kind of even down to the lowest ranking employee, uh, if you will, uh, to keep an IoT system secure? Yeah, um, so you know, we've alluded to it a little bit. At Bastille, we build um, these physical sensors. Uh, so it looks like a Wi-Fi access point. Um, and it's basically a really, really souped up software to find radio. So we see 324 megahertz of bandwidth instantaneously. And to put that in perspective, that's a huge number. If most of these software to find radios that you can buy off the shelf are like in the 50 megahertz range. So we're four or five times more than that. So this device, this Bastille sensor, you buy it, you kind of mount it in it, you know, on your ceilings, just like you'd mount Wi-Fi access points, and they're constantly scanning for all these wireless protocols. Um, and then we have a massive processor on there that's decoding all these protocols simultaneously. And basically we can see, so we're digitally decoding, we can't see any encrypted data, um, but we can see like NetFlow data. So we can see headers, we can see who's talking to whom, device IDs, those sorts of things. Um, so how it works is our sensors see the traffic, and then the traffic gets backhauled to a cloud where we do machine learning on it to figure out anomalies and threats. And then we have a user interface where alerts happen. So you can program in, I want to be alerted if a new Zigbee device gets set up. Um, the other thing that we do in the cloud is we actually localize all the emitters to a few meters. So what the use case we see is there's a new device, you know, in this corner of this room, you need to go check it out. Somebody just brought it in, unplug it and, and fix it. Um, as far as like what employees can do or how you can protect, um, it was a little bit self-serving, but I, it's, it's hard to count on all of your employees having perfect cyber hygiene, right? So the real way to attack it is just like we attack endpoint security and computer security is we, we build security mechanisms around it to detect when problematic things are happening. Um, so a network security and endpoint security. So what we're really, uh, what we're really making is a network security product for IoT. So it gives you the network visibility of when new things come online and when they're broken. And honestly, that's the best way to, to handle it because you can't count on employee X not bringing in one of these devices um, that's contraband unless you're able to, to sense it. Great. Well, uh, 
I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what else Bastille, what other vulnerabilities you all discover and the outreach you all are doing and the products you, you offer. Um, definitely interested in seeing how security grows with IoT and, and the discussions that are brought up there. Uh, thank you very much, Bob, for speaking with me today and um, to stay tuned to IoT in action. Good. Thanks, Philip. See you later. Take care.